Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to the life cycle of a lead magnet. I'm so excited that you decided to join me today. If you have any questions toward the end, I'm going to pop in and answer some questions for you. If you could do me a massive favor, if you want your question answered, write it out in a complete sentence because by the time I go back, I won't know what you're referencing. So if you wouldn't mind, that would be really nice. And I hope you don't mind my pigtails today. I was having a bad hair day. <laughs> But it uh, feels good get off my neck. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a lot to do, and I want to try to get done with, with about an, uh, at about an hour, I'll get done, and then if you have any questions, we'll go from there. So I wanted you to block some time to, uh, to stick for the questions if you'd like to have your questions answered. All right, first of all, who am I and why am I here? For those of you who don't know me, which many of you do, I actually am a real estate broker in the Arizona. Um, I've had a pretty extensive legal career before I got my license in the early 2000s. Uh, and when I did start working uh, in the real estate industry, I had quit my job cold turkey as a single mother of two kids, two teenage boys, and I went out in a fully commissioned job. Well, you know, when you're, when you're feeling a little threatened to get you know, money in the door, you end up finding ways to make it. And uh, I found a company that provided me, oh, I want to say a couple hundred leads a month. Uh, and I went crazy during the early 2000s when the market was nuts, 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 nuts. Um, I estimate I opened about 10,000 doors. I'm not kidding, knowing how many houses I had to show and how many homes I sold. Uh, so um, it was a pretty busy time. But uh, what I did learn was how to work my database and that is what i focus on today uh, i have spent many many years doing this and now um, i'm not gonna lie i'm pretty fried real estate agent so instead <laughs> i would much rather be here talking to you fine folks about how we can get you to close more of your expensive and time-consuming leads so that is what my whole focus and passion has been really over the last four or five years i still do a tiny bit of real estate here in arizona i live in scottsdale um, but to be honest with you, uh, I would. I am so focused and really, really uh, passionate about helping real estate professionals and really anybody in the sales industry to close more of our leads. Um, one of the things that we don't really seem to think about when we're out buying leads or sitting open houses or farming is the importance of having a decent database and also being able to convert that database because unfortunately, even though we're here talking about lead magnets and lead generation, uh, the money is not in lead generation. The money is in lead follow-up. So I'm here to talk about how you can use your lead magnets to lead generate. And then I am gonna talk about follow-up because follow-up is so important. So it's not just about lead generation. So whatever y'all are doing, um, actually, why don't you pipe in in the, in the chat or in the Q&A and tell me what kind of lead generation are you doing? Because what we're going to talk about is not, it, I mean, it does focus on online business because you are providing uh, something for somebody to sign up with uh, online. Um, but at the same time, you can take a lot of what I'm going to tell you today and actually put it into snail mail, direct mail um, offers to advertisements that you might be doing. I don't know how many of you do advertisements and things like that anymore, like in net magazines and things, but anything you have that you can put a link into, you can use a lead magnet. So that's how we lead generate with everything we're doing. And in fact, if you're hiring a company to go out and do lead generation for you, they're doing the exact same thing for you. They're basically coming up with an offer, an irresistible offer to get people to get you uh, to get people to give up their firstborn child, which is really their contact information. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, as you can see, I actually have now rolled out my own CRM, and we will talk a little bit about that today uh, in case you're at all interested. But realistically, um, I'm here really to just help you learn a little more about how you can automate and organize your business and make some money doing it affordably. All right. So and again, if you have any questions, let me know. Let me just see what anybody, if anyone chimed in to tell me what you guys were doing for your lead gen. Um, can you hear me okay? Open houses, KV Core uh, squeeze pages, nothing. Oh, honey, we're going to get you fixed, Kim. <laughs> YouTube videos, I love it. Landing pages, Facebook lead ads, and, um, and, and the landing pages, nice. Um, uh, 
We're not talking about weirdness today, <laughs> Lisa. Okay, all right, cool. So here's today's outline, what we're gonna talk about. Um, what is a lead magnet, a lead magnet? And we are going to then talk about the value of the lead magnets in your real estate business. And I'm gonna provide you a list of real estate lead magnet ideas. And then I'm gonna to talk to you about ways that you can create your lead magnet and where you can put the thing so that you can get people to sign up and actually drive some business to yourself how to capture the lead information. So now that you've got a magnet, an irresistible offer, how are you gonna get people to sign up? Um, and what software will you use? Uh, sharing your magnet with your ideal audience. So who are you gonna get this lead magnet out to so that people can sign up, that the right people see it? And then we're gonna talk about conversion because, because the conversion is in the follow-up. And then branding yourself to help you with, uh, to help your magnet. So, We'll talk all about these things in our little hour that we have together. Uh, God, I don't want to spend too much time on um, yakking away because I just love to do that sometimes. I'll give you all kinds of tips whether you like it or not. Um, this, is funny, uh, this is a funny little image here. I don't know how many of you have seen this. I talk about it in almost every single dang uh, training that I do because I know how hard our life is. Um, I have been doing this a long time and I get how hard it is. And we get excited about what we're doing, and then tomorrow it's hard, and then today it's happy, and then tomorrow they didn't show up, and then they said they were gonna write an offer, and then they didn't do it. And then the house goes under contract, and next thing you know, it falls out. So I know a lot of that's happening right now with the scares that people are having, so I've been watching all the blogs and the, and the forums, and everyone's asking you know, what's going on with your business now that all this um, stuff is happening in, in the world. But so, this is our life. So what we're trying to do is actually help to automate it for you. So if you're one of those people that like to go in and just post things somewhere on Facebook or on Instagram, and then all of a sudden people are writing you back in your messenger, that can become really disastrous. So one of the reasons that I love the automation part of this is that we don't really want them to be writing us back necessarily onesie twosie in our messenger. It's not a really good way for us to manage our business. So if we could get them to sign up for something instead and fill out a form and have that information dump into uh, your CRM and then have it automate so that you can immediately start to communicate with them, wouldn't that just be special? <laughs> so our goal is to have that happen for you. So we're going to try to even this line out. You know, it's never ever going to be way up here all the time. We know that in our business because we're busy working in it today and then our lead generation suffers because we're busy running around showing houses or taking appointments or staying up late. I was helping my neighbor the other day. She, her broker was out of town. She doesn't work for me, but I was helping her and, um, you know, late at night and I did not envy her having to deal with it. But at the same time, she was selling a $500,000 house with five offers on it and she was freaking out. So this is our life, right? It's great today. Tomorrow we're stressed. Okay. So let's talk, I, you know, I started, I've trained this a few times and I talk about what lead magnets are and then I, re, I say the word lead magnet, I, re, I realize that a lot of people don't even really know what it means. And you heard me say irresistible offer earlier and that's pretty much what it is, is we're bribing them to give us their contact information. That's really what it is. So what is it that we can bribe them with is really what it boils down to. And what that looks like in your world is what whatever it's gonna you're gonna be able to provide to give to get them to sign up and give up their email address, maybe their phone number, their first name, maybe their last name. All of these things come into play. You're not always gonna get all of that information, depending on the kind of offer that you're giving. And this is, you know, when we talk about um, why, why we don't get as many signups on our lead mag magnets, it's because we're probably asking for too much, depending on what that lead magnet is. So we'll have a little chat about the kind of um, lead magnets and, and then talk about maybe the kind of forms that you want to have for those so that you're not offer asking too much because they might turn away. So the value of a lead magnet is to encourage signups of potential buyers and sellers, at least in the real estate world it is, right? To build a list and a pipeline, right? We know that when people sign up today, most likely they're not going to buy tomorrow. So this begins your pipeline. I know from my own experience of doing online leads for a long time, that on average, if I was getting 30 to 50 leads a month and they were decent leads, not just some, you know, press a button and get a prize kind of thing, um, I would 
look at, and this consistently from training agents, um, I, I've, I've seen this too, that if you were getting 30 to 50 leads a month, by the time you were in your sixth month, if you had a good follow-up campaign in place, sending, when I say good, that means sending what they want and not just junk, um, that by your sixth month, you will be busy uh, in most cases. And so busy meaning, you know, you could be doing two to three leads or two to three sales a month or more, but you really, um, of course, it will depend on the market and everything else out there. We know that. But if you're doing it the right way, you should be doing two to three to four sales a month if you do it right. Okay. Because we know what the average closing rate of an internet lead is, is about 1% if you don't have anything running, three to 5% if you have something running. So we're building a pipeline. Okay. Our goal also is to get more serious leads. So when, you, when we talk about those kind of forms, that when you're filling the form out and you're creating your form, what, how much are you gonna ask? Because what do we know? If we ask more information, like what's your first name, what's your last name, what's your email, what's your phone number, and what's your address, and can I call you? If you ask all of those things and they actually fill it out, is that more of a serious lead or not? So you got to keep that in mind on uh, what are you going to ask. So I, if you want more serious leads, ask more questions. But what's going to happen in exchange? You're going to get less leads because less people are going to want to fill it out. Okay. Now, I'm sure you've realized this by now, but what I'm offering you is a lead magnet. When I put out my landing page for you to fill out to come into this training, that is a lead magnet. I'm doing a training, that is, the, that is the magnet, right? I only asked, I think, for your first name and your last name in your email. I didn't even ask for your phone number, so don't, if you didn't fill it out, I mean, you didn't fill it out because I didn't ask for it. Because um, I was wanting to see more of you in the training. Uh, but what I do know is that you are going to hear from me and you can opt out if you'd like, but if you want to get my free stuff, you probably want to stay in. <laughs> um, but the, what I do know is that um, I'm going to be able to follow up with you via email. So that's the good part. Now, if you have good things you're following up with, that's even better, right? Um, I just want to check to be sure because every time I hear my, my phone or my phone buzz, I always think somebody's trying to tell me they can't hear me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get more serious leads. And then, of course, converting, converting is a numbers game, which I mentioned earlier. Your average closing of any lead is going to be 3 to 5% of these kind of leads. The more leads you have, the more opportunities you have, right? So, however, you'll have more opportunities, but if you don't have your follow-up plan in place, you really are wasting a lot of time and energy doing all this, okay? All right, so real estate lead magnet ideas. Now, um, many of you came in here because I offered this list, and what I'm going to do, so you don't have to take a screenshot of anything here. I'm going to actually cre uh, provide this um, list back to you. Uh, in an email after with this video if you want to watch it again and I also have another special prize and gift for you at the end so if you um, just don't worry about taking a screenshot but we're gonna go through the ideas and talk a little bit about them so um, 10 questions you might ask before hiring your Scottsdale agent right now you'll notice that I put city name in here this is where it becomes really key because you might have different things going on in your world than somebody else down here. And, and when you offer something that's more specific to your world, instead of just saying 10 questions to ask your agent or you know, the down payment plans for you know, 2020, you're gonna say things more specific to your audience. So we really want you to think about who is your audience going to be, right? So that you can name this lead magnet specific for that audience and more chance they're going to sign up for it. So if you're going to offer, um, well, I got a lot more offers here, so let's, let's go through them. Three simple upgrades to skyrocket the value of your home. <laughs> so how could you present that one? I would probably do that in a video, to be honest with you, because there's only three things, right? And so maybe you just get them to sign up and, and get your email back from you with a quick video and they're starting to connect with you. Right. So come up with the ways you're also as you're thinking this over, how could you how could you create it? OK, we're going to talk about ways to do that. How to sell your home in 21 days or less. Right. So, again, this might be a guide, might be something along those lines. All right. This is pretty obvious. A lot of us do this list of homes under or over 350,000. So there's so many angles to this. Um, you could just go on and on and on. So what that means, again, is you would want to focus on your niche, 
uh, what you think people are interested in seeing and getting from you in your world. You want to talk, think about your demographic, your ideal um, price range, uh, or maybe you specialize in specific kind of homes, uh, or maybe it's just views, maybe it's ocean fronts, whatever it is. So you make a plan, but where are you going to get this list from, right? That's what you have to think about. Where's the list going to go? Where, where are you going to get this and how are you going to get it to them? So we're going to talk about that, but, and don't just think you're going to send them to the MLS, by the way because you're not. <laughs> Home buyers and sellers guides. Well, those are really popular, obviously, but in my book, I would love to see you get a, get a guide and create one specifically for all of your niches instead of some just generic guide that you have. So if you could get a guide where you could um, maybe uh, duplicate it and then just make four or five different types of guides, you could do that. And uh, it's all in the message is always the same at the end, but at the beginning, so you could have these special different kind of guides made specific for whatever that area or demographic is, right? So that's what I would do. It would be way more specific and you'd get more people signing up than just some generic thing, okay? So um, seven questions you might ask during your next home inspection, right? If you, if you, this will probably get you somebody who's thinking about buying and, and, or, buying a home and getting an inspection. So that's kind of an, it's kind of an early, early kind of thing that you might catch somebody with early. And then part of that is, is that they're starting to think about either buyers or sellers, by the way, it's buying or selling. And what do I need to do to get ready for what's out on the market or what should I do with my house, right? Free home buyer and seller webinar, right? Three secrets to um, selling your home fast, you know, something along those lines. Come to the webinar. I love that. Or you could do it online like this. And what's so fun about that is, guess what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to record this and uh, it will be used as a lead magnet so that I can go out and get more, more people just like yourself signing up for stuff. <laughs> so same thing you can do. You can create a webinar in the peacefulness of your own home. And I've actually done this where I got my lender on the line with me and we did a screen share between the two of us and we just had an interview between ourselves. So we did a home buyer webinar and I had my, my lender there. You could even have your inspector there, maybe an appraiser, uh, and you just do it all. I mean, nowadays you can do everything online um, and people will sign up for that stuff, right? And then you would just have it. Now it's called Evergreen. Because once I record it, I'll be able to keep using it over and over again, and I don't have to do it again, right, until things change and I want to update it, which happens quite a bit. First time home buyer loan program list. Now, I will say that anything having to do with first time home buyers or down payment assistance and that kind of stuff, you will definitely want to have a lender involved if you can. Also, understand you are going to get the lowest hanging fruit out there. Um, nothing against our first time home buyers, but that is good. Keep in mind the price range. If you're up for it, go for it. And it is low hanging fruit, which means you'll probably get a lot of people signing up for that if you post it in the right places, right? And where, where could you post the first time home buyer loan program list? Something maybe in your marketplace. I'm gonna give you ideas on where to post things. But so places where you can make sure that you can find the people. Mm -hmm. Five most important steps to take before you buy and sell a home. So. This is very similar to a guide that I have. So um, you definitely would want to create maybe a guide. Uh, and again, this also could be a video, a little video training. You could put a video, uh, this into a little teeny mini course. So there's free software out there in the world that you could put a little mini course together. And it could be every, you know, the steps that you take. And maybe you spend five or 10 minutes recording each one of those little teeny lessons. And you know what they, what, why do I keep talking about video? I'm sure, we've got a bunch of people on here that I know are doing video. Why do you think I keep talking about video? Because they connect with you this way. Um, I don't know how many of you have, and I'm gonna, I don't mean to sound kind of braggado braggadocious, but I've had so many people say, I've been stalking you forever and finally reached out. It's because, um, you connect with me and you trust me now. And when you came in and decided you were gonna sign up or whatever it is through, through all the things that I offer, you just, you just believe me because I'm giving it. I'm, the more you give away, the more you're gonna be able to connect with people. So I 
Well, and I can give you um, the names of some course software. Actually, I don't have it in front of me right now, but that you can sign up for free and do this, but you don't even have to do it that way. You can add it to a five-day drip campaign. How easy is that? Five most important steps. Day one, boom. Day two, boom. Day three, and it's a video. It's a video course that you're just sending out in an email every day. And then what you do at the end of each day, you say, and tomorrow we're gonna talk about blah, blah, blah. So don't miss it, you know? Um, so you, it, that's what they call the soap opera series, where you create a soap opera out of your drip campaign and you get them so excited that they just can't wait until they see the next one coming tomorrow and guess what happens when people open your mail not only are, are you being if you've got good software and you can identify who's opening your mail uh, they'll open it and then you have a link in there if they click on it now you're being notified they're clicking on it so a lot of the stuff that you do is not just for them but it's for you so that you can identify who you want to try to spend time prospecting today because you're looking at your database and you're seeing this hot activity and things are happening and now you're going to go after those folks because you're seeing them hit on your stuff every day. So do it for yourself more than you do it for them. You know, I mean, obviously you're doing it for yourself, but I mean, when you think about providing value, that value is also, also going to provide you value because you're going to be able to see them hitting on these things. Okay. Um, now, when I first started, and I've told people this before, when I first started in my real estate career, one of the reasons I was busy was because our company's policy was that we had to give a rebate back, which <laughs> um, you don't even want to know. I mean, some of you heard the story, but I had to give up 65% of everything I did uh, of my commissions. Um, and so you probably wonder why the hell I did that. But I sold 42 homes my first year in real estate and, and made $82,000 that year. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't choke. But here's what I'll tell you. <laughs> I learned how to do this business. I was desperate, you know, so everything became a game. But I did give the, we had to give the commission back, um, and it was part of their um, down payment, or uh, not down payment, but um, closing cost assistance. And, uh, and it was great. So here's what I'll say about this. If you're up for doing it, just make sure that your broker's aware and they're okay with it. Okay, I'm not going to give you any lessons on, you know, what you're supposed to do or not do in your marketing, but just make sure that you are doing that, okay? Email or video series on the steps of the real estate process. Now, I will say this. This is so important. We as agents are horrible about telling our, advising our clients and our prospects in our world, number one, on how we get paid. And then you get angry because they've gone off and found another agent. They've gone on to Zillow, even though they're working with you, and they're going and, look, and signing up for stuff, right? Well, why are they doing that? Well, partly because you can't stop them. But also... You need to tell them how it is you get paid, you know? Um, so it's very important. But if you explain the steps, they're going to trust you. So it's all about knowing, liking, and trusting. You've heard this over and over again. And in our, in our internet world, it's so hard to gain that trust if you're just going to be slapping text out to them or emailing them and not giving them any value. If it's just every time you send an email and go, how's your home search coming? And you're not giving them anything. You're not educating them. You're not sending them to help anything or offering to meet them, whatever. I mean, it gets old and stale, right? So do something along these lines. And when you educate them, they're going to understand the process better and um, hopefully not go off and find another agent without you, <laughs> okay? Uh, oh, I love this. Create a PowerPoint of your video series above and then save slides as a PDF to create your own ebook. <laughs> I read that. Um, a while back about how you could take your PowerPoint and actually turn it in to an ebook. And another thing you can do is you could take your video and send it over to a company called um, Rev, I think it's rev.com, and have them transcribe that thing. And when they transcribe it, it will turn into a book for you. And then you can send it into Fiverr and have somebody edit it for you. And the cheapest way you can create a book and then you have a guide or a book right, a, a series uh, of, of different, you could even do different, you know, videos that you've done and turn them into a book. So, um, how, and then you've got this PDF that you can offer up that they can download uh, of your conversation. And if you wanted to throw some videos into it, because it's online, it's easy for them to click on things and run a video too. So, uh, I love this idea. It's really easy. And again, 
you know, if you're not up for doing stuff live, I mean, some of us get the, get a kick out of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm a performer. I do get a kick out of coming on here and talking to y'all live, but not everybody does. And you don't have to show your face, but I wish you would because that's how they connect with you. All right. So, um, but if you can do it in the privacy and the quiet of your office, um, and, and you'll find that it's not as hard. You just, it's just practice making perfect, right? Um, market subdivision zip real, zip, zip code real estate updates, all right? So this is really important, um, especially I would say if you are trying to market for sellers, you could send out uh, farming cards if you've got lists of people, and I would personally go out and buy a domain specific to my farm if I was going to be doing farming. And I'll be honest and tell you, I hadn't done, I, I did some, I didn't do a ton of it. Um, but if I had to do it over again, this is exactly what I would do. I would not be out buying, um, you know, cards from our title companies that are, they all look the same. I would buy a domain specific to the farm that I'm in. I would go and take a picture of the front of the neighborhood or somewhere that identifies with it and then farm it that way and have them come in to get a list of something for you. So if you have the domain, you can redirect it over to a page on your site that will have the results to that, right? Um, I personally try to always drive people over to my website. And you'll hear me say this over and over again that I got on the first page of Google organically in four months for three of my niches using my website and my drip campaigns. So um, it's because I was driving people back over to my site from leads I had purchased. And I haven't purchased leads in years for real estate uh, in, the, in the North Phoenix area where I was. And I'm still on the first page of Google organically because of all of the simple thing I did was to set up a recurring campaign that kept driving them back. So again, this creates a lot of things. Not only can you offer up for people to sign up to get it, you can put it on your social media You get people to sign up for updates because everybody wants to know what's going on in the market. And if, especially if you're focusing in a subdivision, for instance, or wherever you're at, like we have subdivisions, right? they all look like the same cookie cutters for the most part, but um, wherever you're at, you know, uh, provide that update and they will latch onto that. And now not only, are you um, going to see that they're hitting on it? Because, you know, if you go and send a card to somebody, most likely they're just going to chuck it in the trash. You want to offer something to get them to sign up on that card, on that postcard, or an actual card, right? And then if you get them to sign up, you know they actually got the card, and now you've got their email address. <laughs> so isn't that fun? <laughs> so stay in front of them, folks. Um, all right, relocation packet. Uh, you can get those things, like a relocation digital guide from your title company if they're willing to, um, and if they're willing to brand it to you, that would be great. I think writing a relocation guide would be good, but that's so time consuming when I, you know, may not be the best use of your time uh, because a lot of our title companies have them. Um, sorry, there's a, there's a little gnat flying around it's bugging me. <laughs> it's gonna go in my mouth. Uh, relocation packet or, um, or even just some sort of a guide we've talked about. Area school listings with the ratings. Now, this is cool, except you just do got to be careful that you don't send them over to somewhere that's marketing other real estate professionals. So be careful. Sometimes you, you can find a link uh, that they can get, um, or you can just create a document and just have it, you know, and you can keep it updated. Uh, maybe you do it every six months or something. I don't, I don't know how often school ratings change. Maybe, maybe it's only once a year. Um, my husband's a school teacher. He should, he, I think it's like once a year he gets, they get, their school gets rated. So you could just update it every year. And then you'd have the download for it for the local area schools. Now, where I live, I live in a state where we have this document required by our association and it's called the Arizona, it's actually not required, but they provide it, the Arizona Buyer Advisories as an example. So what that document is, it's um, a document that advises the buyer of all the research they should do. And what includes is a number of links in there for them to do research. So what's really cool about that is that in all those links, you could actually create, uh, oh man, you could create umpteen numbers of lead magnets out of each one of those links by going to the links, reading up on what the information is. So what's important where you're at, right? Where I'm at, 
We have expansive soil. We have rattlesnakes. We have tarantulas and scorpions and uh, radon. I mean, what's important where you're at? Those are the kind of things that you would want to explain. So this fire advisory is kind of cool. Um, you could, in our case, download it. Does your uh, association have anything like that? Because if they do, uh, you can go there. The other place for this would be NAR, because NAR has a bunch of downloadable stuff that can help educate them on this kind of thing. So go to NAR, go to NAR's website, and they offer all this stuff. Go look, go look it up. Um, tons of stuff. Okay, hook up with vendors such as movers, inspectors, and offer discount coupons. Now, this is one of the things that I know that a lot of us like to go out and offer a list of open houses, which always scares the crap out of me, or a list of um, new build communities. You got to be careful with those because you know if they get those lists, they're going to wander off and without you. So I like to offer coupons if I'm going to do something like that. So if you can hook up with people or even your local restaurants, you could do. Um, and then you not only that, but you become a friend of the restaurant owner and the restaurant owner talks to a lot of people. And so they're going to remember you. So if you walk into a restaurant that you like, one of your favorites, see if they'll be willing to do a coupon with you. Um, and you contribute some and they contribute some anytime anybody comes in, maybe 10% off, you know. Is it cheaper than going out and spending $2,000 buying Zillow leads? Oh, I would say so. Yeah, probably. List of homes close to a major employer. Now, where I live, there is an Amazon distribution center. Um, isn't it cool when you get, when you, I don't know if you guys have this where you're at, but I could order something from Amazon and get it the same day. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so, uh, when that, but those are the kind of things that people might have an interest in. And, and what I would do, how I thought of this idea was um, like we're in warm weather Amazon, I could go and market to cold weather Amazon locations where they have businesses and I could do some advertising and say, hey, move down, you know, relocate to your Amazon down in Phoenix instead, you know, and then you can give them some lists and stuff for school districts and that kind of thing, all right? All right, so let's talk a little bit about how we create our lead magnets now that we've got these ideas and all these great ideas. Oh, sorry. Um, what, first of all, you have to do is what are you offering? And uh, is it something that is digital? Is it downloadable? Can somebody click on something and get to it? So if you're going to create something like that, which you can either get somewhere, you can purchase, you can edit, and whatever, or you can create it yourself from, from scratch like I did. And everything that you're going to see on these next couple screens were created from scratch by moi. Um, and I basically did them on a software called Canva and I, a software called Word <laughs> and Adobe Acrobat, <laughs> okay? So you can easily do these things. And um, if you, even if you just have a one-page idea, uh, then you could either do it in Word or you can do it uh, on, in Canva. And so uh, how many of you are using Canva and know about Canva? Canva is one of the most amazing pieces of software that you can get for free. And you sign up canva.com and you can go over there and create all kinds of stuff. And this is an example. These three things were guides that I, oops, that I created on Canva. Uh, whoop, geez, going too far ahead. I go back. Um, that I created on Canva. You can go over there and you can click on something and say, I want to create a book cover. And they pull up all these offers. Now, I, Canva is one of those softwares that has a premium that if you pay for it, you'll get more images and more opportunities to do other things. But if you pay for it, you do have a lot of nice options. And it's actually very inexpensive. And I, one of those things that I recommend you do pay for if you can afford to have it because it's so helpful. So you go over there and you create a cover page and then you go and you write a guide, right? And um, if you want to write it. Otherwise, you know, I have these. Uh, but if you want to get, um, create something, I just go into Word and I type up whatever it is. I have one page downloads for things. You know, um, in the past, I've and I still have this stuff, down, downloads for my favorite subject lines, right? So it's a one page document, but it's amazing how people will sign up for that because I want to be able to get my mail open, right? So people would sign up for my subject lines. In this case, you're offering something to a buyer or a seller. If you want to come up with those three or five or 10 things or that are most important that you think that you need to share, 
right? Type it up on Word. Now, you're going to notice it says click here to start your home search now. So inside, what's going to happen is when you create your Word document, you will highlight that and you will hyperlink. Now, hyperlink will hyperlink it over to your website. Now, you're doing it while it's in the Word version. And um, if you just, if you don't know how to hyperlink, just, I mean, I can do a whole training on that, but um, you basically just highlight it. And I usually right click on it and then Word will pop up and at the bottom, it'll give you an option to link. And you'll just go get your website link, right? And go and bring it, send them over to your site where they're gonna start their search. So then what happens is, when you, you save the whole thing when it's all done, this is just one page of a guide, by the way, but you save the whole thing when it's all done, and then you save it again as a PDF. So you go back into Word and pick out the format you want to save it in. Now, when it's saved as a PDF, it then makes your link live. So they can just click on it, and it will take them over to your site. All right? So that's you know really important. Now, where would I put this? I would put it on my website. And I'll, I'm going to take you over to another example on some sites here. Well, where would it go? Because you, now you've got it. You could send it after they sign up via email, or you could put it in a link on your website where they will go to your site, and then you get that fine Google juice I keep talking about, right? We send it over there, and if you're able to put it, like I know if you have a, any kind of a blog site, if you have a site that you can have, build pages on, if you have a site that um, has media in the back, that's the best thing you can do with this stuff is to put them there and you will import them over there and then you would create a blog post for it and then you've got this URL link that will be created when you can import it there. And when they then go to your site, hopefully you've been able to go in and um, like build pages up that will have tags on them and that's how you get the juice because of the things that people search for, right? If somebody was going in to search like, um, the 10 things I need to know about buying a home in Scottsdale or, you know, buying a home in Scottsdale is the tag. So I would want to put that on my page if you have the ability to do that. Now, many of us, now I work, my license is hung at eXp Realty and we have KB Core websites. I can do this right on my KB Core, KB Core website. No problem. I build up a page and I just plop this stuff in there. Right. And, um, done. So, um, so here's some other examples of how you can create some other download things in Canva. So here was a coupon that I did years ago. Don't try to use it. I don't even know, I don't even know what it was for. It's been so long. But I ran through my Canva and found it in there. And so uh, it's a coupon for closing costs, right, if you want to offer that. Um, and here is something that uh, our, my dear friend Karen uh, is pro have provided to some of us that we could um, take and use. Well, what I did when I got this, because she gave it to me from Canva, is I went in and I added a clickable link. In Canva, you can do that. If you, create, if you save it as a PDF, your document then can become a clickable link. And so that's cool because you can then, you know, take that and put it on your site and have people click around and do things, depending on what it is. Um, or if you email it in a, in a, in a, you know, as an attachment, they'll get it and they can click on it and then you can send them anywhere you want. Now, Another thing that's great about um, clickable links is that wherever you take them, you can, if, as long as it's on a page that you can create or somewhere, you can put, guess what, Facebook pixel codes. And I know it's probably some over some of your heads, but p Facebook pixel tracking codes and Google um, tracking codes. So what can we do when we have a tracking code? Well, that just means that we're able to know when people are clicked. Well, we don't know who they are specifically, but when they click, something gets loaded onto their site that actually tracks them. <laughs> so um, we know that next time they come to this, uh, now we can go in and actually do retargeting ads because this system knows it was their computer. So remember when you're like you're out searching something, all of a sudden you start seeing stuff show up in your in your feed. Well, that's because you clicked on something that caused that to happen. And it's a tracking code. It's tracking the fact that you did this. And so now you can retarget, right? So you've got these leads that you got from people signing up on things. And now you can turn around and it's like, well, I don't know why I can't get these people to convert. I'm sending out my drip campaigns and they're, you know, I can see them clicking on stuff, but they're really not responding. I don't know what's going on. 
and now you could go another route and do a whole series of retargeting ads with them. So you want them to click on things. Is all that making sense? That means you got to have somewhere that they can click on and somewhere that you can track it. So, and normally it's on your website. Actually, you can put tracking codes on your landing pages as well. Those landing opt-in pages we're gonna talk about next, okay? So gosh, there's just so much. We could be here for days, I could. Here's another, um, another uh, lead magnet uh, that I created on my eXp site, as a matter of fact, um, North Scottsdale and Rio Verde Real Estate Acreage Homes for Sale. So if I was gonna market, um, you know, this is where I live, and what I would want to do is provide a list of homes and then I would get it out there to them. So I built a blog page that actually had a search on it as well. So on this, it, this was actually what it looked like on my homepage there when I built it. it I just here for them to click on. But I can drive the people over to my site once they sign up. But when I did, I built the page and here's what the page looks like. It was very simple. I went in to my KV Core website and ran a search for this. And because my KV Core website does not allow me to put any tags on the actual search result page, I decided instead to write a blog um, and or a page. There is a blog or a page in the in that system. But um, and so what I did right down here it says click here to view all the available homes for sale. Um, this actually drove them over to the results page, right? So if you if I wanted to go in and offer a list, this is how I would do it. And I would not send them to the MLS. And um, here's why. Because there's no Google juice <laughs> at all. And we, we, did you hear me earlier when I said our average closing of an internet lead is 3 to 5%? Uh, if we have anything going, that's good, right? If you have drip campaigns running and stuff. So, um, but, so what are we going to do with the other 95% of people? We're going to have them hit on it because they still will. They'll come and look. They'll hit on it, and not only am I going to send this out one time after they sign up, but I'm going to plant this le this link into a recurring email that's going to keep sending to them every three to four days when they're a buyer. If they're a seller, I'm going to do it weekly. So you're and so not only are they being sent over to my site, but I have the Google tracking and the pixel codes on the back end tracking, right? And they can also sign up here, which would be fabulous. Because if they sign up on my website, now they're going to get real-time listings instead of me forcing it on them every three days in an email that I have to send. So we do want them to sign up on our site. So that means you got to have this page built, right, for your list. And don't just send them to RPR. Or, you know, we all use our cloud CMAs and all that. I'm going to say this. If you want to use those, that's fabulous. But take the link and put it on a page on your site instead of just sending them the link. Uh, to uh, RPR because guess what or, or cloud CMA or whatever you guys are using uh, Because you're not getting any anything out of it, you know So those 95% of people that aren't closing with me are actually still helping me Because I'm going to keep driving them back here over and over again And the more they hit on it the more that Google likes it and sees it and I'm putting gas in my website real real uh, my website um, gas tank, right? So, uh, so this is how you get people to keep seeing you organically. And then you show up on the first page of Google like I did. <laughs> so I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but I randomly did it. I'm an old lady. I had no idea what I was doing, but it worked. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Now, 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 I'm going to give you all these different ideas on how to capture the lead contact information. There are a zillion ways to do it. You got MailChimp out there. They actually have landing page software. You can build your own gravity forms, right? Which is your WordPress plugin if you've got a website. Your uh, formidable forms is one. Your website might have some forms, you know, in there if they're editable. I um, have them in mine at KV Core, but they stink, so um, I don't use them. But you have them if you want them, and some of your sites. Aweber's another one, kind of expensive. Constant Contact, again, another one, but you're paying for another emailing service. Personally, if you've already got a CRM, not sure why you would do that, but is another one's kind of a cheapie. You pay, I have to pay, and when I did it for years, it was like 10 bucks a month that you had to pay for it. Listing to leads, many of us have those forms. Um, you might get it free from a lender or something like that, or if you want to pay for it, you could do that. And then there's the infamous Facebook lead forms um, when you create a lead generation ad. Now that's different, you guys, 
than just putting a post and boosting it. This is actually creating a form inside of Facebook. So whatever um, you want to offer, then it will give you an opportunity. Sorry, the garbage man's coming, so if they get loud, I'm sorry. Um, but whatever you want to offer, then they will come and um, um, sign up on Facebook. Then you just got to be sure that you've got that integration set up, though, so that the integration does flow into your CRM. All right. Now, um, you heard me say earlier, I got my own CRM. Well, guess what? We have landing pages already built into our CRM. And so we also have the matching campaigns for them already. So here are some examples that you can either build in your own or they're already built in mine. So, um, but like I said, what you want to do is collect a name. And when it comes down to it, you just got to be sure, as I said earlier, whatever your offer is really needs to, you decide whether or not it makes sense for you to ask for more information. Um, and in this case, our opt-in landing pages can be posted. They become URL links and you can take and post them anywhere you darn well want to post them on social media. Uh, and we'll have ideas here in a minute, but then you've got that link, which makes it so much easier to kind of put in your pocket and go do what you want with it, right? Um, in our case, I actually do have um, opt-in pages for open house signups as well, and so that is an opt-in page. It's the same thing. It's a landing page that you can open up your laptop or your tablet, and many of us have software out there that you pay for or whatever open house tools to do this. Um, but if you are still doing the fill out the paper form and then manually putting them in or maybe not manually because you're beat up and you've lot, now you've got stacks of these laying around in your desk. Does that sound like you? <laughs> um, I've worked with a lot of agents who told me that. So uh, that's not really productive for you, right? The other cool thing is, is this is what you will do in place of that messenger. You have this URL. So when somebody writes you back to maybe a post that you put, and you've got this, if you have the landing page, you could put on your phone, if you're on, your, on the road, in your notes, on your phone somewhere, um, have a preset, um, have a preset uh, um, little text in there that says, oh, thanks so much for asking about the home. Um, to get you more information, please go here. And they click on it and fill it out. Instead of you having to manually go in there and deal with these things, if you're posting all over the place, right? Now in our case, we also have landing pages that have pre-built video in them for all the holidays. This particular one is a landing page that is connected to a video email uh, system that we have for the holidays. So this one doesn't actually have anything to accept to um, actually have people sign up on. But I will say this, this thing could be posted anywhere and you could put a Google tracking code on it and a pixel code so when they click on it, boom, you're collecting their info and now you can do retargeting. So um, if you want to take these URLs, you, you can do that. But it's just ideas. You can do this in whatever system you want to do them in, but I'm giving you examples of what we have pre-built in here that you don't have to do if you don't want to. Um, all right, so, so now we're getting people signing up. This is where it's really important. The conversion is in the follow-up, right? And you're going to hear me talk about this. The conversion is not in lead generation. It's, it, I mean, the money is not in lead generation. We have to convert. So you're going to need to quickly create your form. You can do it in Engage more if you don't, if you don't have a place. <laughs> Just get in here. Uh, no need for Zappy or landing pages in our software, but no matter what, Whatever system you're using, you want to make sure that you've got a way to connect it so that the information dumps into your CRM, whichever CRM you have. Okay, now we don't have this problem in ours because the minute they sign up, it goes right in and our matching campaign goes on. So um, I just look, see a typo there. Twos, other emailing twos. <laughs> um, before you start running your ads, very important, you got to get your drip campaign ready to automatically respond. And this is where and why. Patty has a business to today, okay? So, and the reason I have this business is because I started helping agents with their drip campaigns. Um, I sold my campaigns for years in another CRM out there, which will remain nameless today, but I did it for years, and I also sell them in Word version, just so you know. Um, but now, um, your goal, though, is not to have to go in and reinvent a wheel. So what we really think you should do is get a really good campaign that you have and you will clone that thing. And for every single ad, every single landing page, 
whatever your offer is, this is what's really key, is that your follow-up stinks most of the time uh, because you're sending and using, number one, crappy, crappy campaigns and crappy CRMs that you have. Um, or maybe you love your CRM, but they got crappy campaigns in there. But you don't have anything that's long term because we know people don't come online and buy from you tomorrow. It's got to be long term at least a year. So you got to have something. But what you'll do is you get your campaign and you get it really good and you get it real tight. You love what it is and then you copy it for every time. If, you, if your system allows you to do it, you will take that buyer campaign or seller campaign and you will copy it because in the end, they're all going to be buyers or sellers. So what you're doing is at the very beginning, you're sending out the URL to whatever the offer is, if you can, or whatever it is that you're offering. If you have to send it, I don't love the idea of sending a PDF in the mail, it's in the email. It, it, it does not make sense to me to do that because you're not getting any clicks. You don't know if they even saw it. If they click, you'll know they saw it. If you've got a good software, just check that. But you want to be able to see that. Right. And then, of course, all those clicks, if they're on your site, is creating you more organic reach and, and increasing your online exposure. So you want to do that. So take a good campaign. So do me a huge favor. Whatever you do is don't use the same email campaign for all of your damn uh, opt-ins. I mean, it, this is why you're not getting good conversion, because if you're offering something and not sending what the people asked for, you've turned them off in the very first email. You just did. And I know, because I've worked with many of you, who have gone out and used um, lead generation Facebook ad guys to create your ads, and then they may or may not set you up on a campaign. But if they do set you up on a campaign, they're just saying, okay, use this one. But if it's related to you know down payment assistance or it's related to first time home buyers or you're offering up a list i don't care what it is it, it's probably not sending your stuff right because it was pre-built by somebody else in a different state that has nothing to do with your world so this is where you're falling off the wagon guys because you're not sending it from the beginning now here's the other key like i mentioned earlier if it's a list of something, and whether it's a list or not, you still want to do this. People care about market updates. People care about listings. So at the very, very minimum, you need to get them, one, what they signed up to get, if it was a guide, if it was whatever. Two, put them on a long-term recurring engagement cam or a, a recurring listing campaign, which is what I call it, and an engagement campaign, so if you can. So you're going to be sending them updates every few days or weekly, depending if it's a buyer. I will say I normally do it every three days uh, because it's not real time and I don't want to hound them too much. But I'm sending them to my site to look at that page that I showed you earlier if you were going to do something like it over and over again. And just make sure that your results page pulls the most recent listings to the top because you can take the URL and create the results page to to, to pop to the top, the, the most recent ones, and then that URL and most websites will be set up that way, right? So keep that in mind. And then be sure that you send that stuff back. It's just so important. And then it's going to help you all the way around. And guess what? The people are going to keep seeing you. You're going to stay top of mind. You set it up one time if you've got a good software that does it. I will say I know KV Core doesn't have that tool in it. Mine does, but a KV Core doesn't. Um, so if you're KV Core users, and I know there's a bunch of us in here, um, that know what your CRM will do for you. And um, if it doesn't do that, then it's too bad. Um, and I think you should get into my system. <laughs> um, so now you've got this fabulous drip campaign that you're going to set up. And this is an example, just a screenshot of the top portion of one of my campaigns. But not only does your campaign want to send an email, which is what's going on here in the blue area, but it's also going to send a text at the same time. We send them both. That's ideally. And these two first things that come out of here, now, now everything above this blue area, so you see the, see it says set email opt-in status. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. Two down, two, three down. You're sending an email and you're sending a text at the same time that's saying almost identical things for the most part. And you send them at the same time because that way if they say no to you in the text, they, you know, or they say no to you in the email, they're happening at the same time, so you're not getting this, why did you write me, I told you no, thing, <laughs> okay? Um, 
So this is all part and parcel to creating drip campaigns, which by the way, I got these too. Um, these are all built into my system. I'm 30 plus campaigns. But your bottom line is have something that you want to send out and it will work. And if you keep using the same one, that's fabulous, just change out the first letter in text and then schedule it what works for your lifestyle and your business. Now, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I've written these things forever and um, they get great results, but you have to figure out what works in your market. Um, you know, if you're working the luxury market, you're, what you're going to do is maybe totally different than what some, some other, that's another problem because you're using these campaigns that aren't really built for luxury, right? So a lot of times they're not. Most of us aren't doing, I don't even know what luxury is in my world because our, our prices have always been low for the most part here in Phoenix. But um, okay, so there we go on that. Um, all right, so branding through the retargeting ads, which is what I was talking about earlier. You get your pixel and you can put them on your landing pages. You can put them on your websites just to track that stuff, all right? You want to create a custom audience for all of your emails you've collected. So that's how you do it, really. You, so you can retarget as well, not just from Facebook pixels, but when people sign up, you can actually export uh, out the list of email addresses of everybody and import it into Facebook as a custom audience. And when you do that, you can make sure those people are seeing it. Now, the only thing about that is that if they didn't sign up on Facebook with the email they signed up with on your form, it's not going to work. But it's an option, you know, you can try it and see how it works. So that's another way to retarget. And you can also do retargeting ads if you're doing video views. Um, so, you know, you would set up that, remember that series of videos that I would do for retargeting? How cool if you collected the names of people and then you set up a five video series that you would put into Facebook and you market to these people and every, you know, once a week they're seeing your new video series. So now they're on Facebook and they're seeing you in their feed because you have their custom audience, their pixel, and all of a sudden they're going, hey, there she is again. You know, so not only is your email and your text campaign running and your recurring listings, but now they're seeing you in, in Facebook. Uh, hello. Um, so in case they never open anything you ever send them, at least you're going to see, they're going to see you, you know, in, in their feed. Oh my God, no. Oh my gosh, we could go on for hours about how fun that would be. I would love to see that. Okay, here's what we know. Sales statistics, 48% of people never follow up with their prospects. That's according to NAR too, by the way. And 80% of sales are made on the fifth to 12th contact. So that's why keeping in front of these people is so important. So it's one thing to go out and collect. This is still part of the life cycle of this lead magnet. So we got the magnet and they signed up. Now we're getting in front of them and we have to keep staying in front of them. So what does that fifth to 12th contact, all these contacts are all of these things we've been talking about, emailing, phone, text, obviously pick up the phone. That's one thing we didn't talk about yet. You got to pick the phone up. Okay. Um, do all these things, get in front of them in different ways and they won't forget you. And they hopefully won't, even if they sign up on Zillow, they're going to go, eh, I'm working with that person because I keep seeing them. I'm not ready, but I'm telling you that girl is all over it or that guy is all over it. And when I'm ready, you know, and then all of a sudden, you're going to get somebody go, oh, I, I'm ready, and they're coming out of the woodwork. It's happened to me, I've, you've heard this, five, five years later, they're coming out of the woodwork, okay? So if you don't stay in front of them, or you think your lead goes bad in a week because they didn't answer their phone, you're losing out because most people won't work with you in a week. They're just not going to. And they may not even respond to you for five, five months or six months or a year or two or five in my case, this happens. But if you don't get it set up to go, they're gonna forget about you pretty damn fast, okay? So why don't people get more automated now? We're trying to help you get more automated, and I'm gonna bet I know the reasons. Number one is it takes too long to implement. Number two, your CRM software is too difficult to learn. Yeah, uh, and we find that, that's why I also have a business, because I know that is one of the biggest worst parts about it. We didn't roll out of the womb, learning how to use our CRMs. And then um, we're too busy and there's no time to set it all up, okay? So many of you have seen my training where I talk about the five steps to the faster lead conversion. For those of you who are new, haven't seen this, first thing you wanna do is pick up the phone and send a text if you can, and or send a text. I like the phone call, 
let's think about it, you guys. Some of you tell me, I don't ever want to call anybody. But if they've given their number, you guys, they're waiting for a call from you. They just are. Um, new lead, email, thanking, thanking and providing the listing or ad information. These are, by the way, these steps are from my own business. I developed these steps knowing that when I did this stuff consistently, I was going to get business. And it happened over and over and over again to the point where I got burned out. But I did it, right? Home listing. So I'm sending out the listing the first time they sign up or whatever it was, and I'm going to keep doing it. So let's talk about that. Maybe you're offering a guide and you don't really know what they want, right? What I would do and what I did was, well, I know where I was marketing. And if it was in the Phoenix market, great. I usually am trying not to take over the entire market here because uh, you, you can't stand out and you need to really focus more on a niche. So I would have two or three niches. If you knew what your niche was, then those people are going to see it because of that audience. So it's always about who is your audience. And once you know that, it's going to be way easier for you. It's this combination between your audience and your um, ad, right? Those two things, you'll know that. So if you know it, then you can send out the list. So if, if you're marketing horse properties like I have in my neighborhood, well, dang it, I know anyone who's going to sign up for it interested in horses. So guess what? They're going to start getting horse properties from me. I don't know what they want exactly because I haven't talked to them yet, but I'm going to start sending them those properties every three days or, what, or however often. If you can do it real time because they signed up on your site, that's even better um, because the site's going to automatically do it. But if you can't and they didn't, then this is the next best step. And then your engaging drip campaign. So on top of sending the listings, you're also sending engagement. You're checking in with them. You're educating them. You're, um, you know, providing them tips and things like that. So uh, that helps because it's all part of the process, the big cycle of what you're doing. And then, of course, when they respond, dang it, pick up the phone and call them back, text them back, be fast, because guess what? They're sitting on the other line waiting to hear from you. Right. And if you're just sitting around, not, you know, well, I got a lead, big whoop. Well, you know what? This is money down the drain. You just spent all this time, all this energy to create this stuff, and then you haven't done anything to follow up, you know? And I'm going to tell you honestly, I am guilty just like any, everybody else out there. Same thing. I'm either fried. I look at my phone and went, oh man, there comes another one. I got a text this morning and um, I get still on my listing leads and my leads and I look at it and go, oh crap. And so I'm like figuring out what am I going to do? I'm getting ready for you guys. So we're in the, we're all in the same boat, right? Um, so you got to be, have a plan. So the more you can automate this stuff, the better off you're going to be. Uh, but do follow up when people ask for that follow up. Okay. Cause that's, that's important. All right, so let's go back and rehash the real life cycle of the lead magnet. First, you want to identify your ideal client. Like, who do you want to create this thing for? What is it? You're, what is that? You know, it, do you want to work with every Tom, Dick, or Harry out there? I don't think so. I worked for <laughs> rental leads coming in like crazy. That was not fun, but it happened because of the way our business was at the time, right? Create the lead magnet based on your ideal client and then add to your website or URL within your Engage More CRM or whatever, whatever that lead magnet is, you gotta have it ready, right? So you gotta create it and then put it into a URL and put it in your CRM email, whatever it is, to get it back out to them. So again, I've gone through best places and ways to do it and put it on your site for the most possible Google juice you can get. Then, you're gonna go and create the opt-in form, and in our case, inside of our system or whatever system you wanna do it in, okay? Um, so, in our case, we already have some, so you just take them and like clone them and then put in images, just add images in your text and you're done, and then you tell them where you want it to go once they sign up, because when they sign up, you can either redirect them over to a website, you can redirect them onto a thank you page, right? And then tell them, go check your email and send it in the email, so that's a way to do it. Um, or you can send them somewhere else, send them to another landing page and try to get them to do something else. So in our case, we can build a landing page with a video on it and we can just redirect them over to that video if we're offering up something. So it could either be a thank you video or it could be the actual lead magnet. So that's cool. And then you can get them to sign up and subscribe to your YouTube channel. And now you've got them in this world. This is a whole nother world 
getting them to sign up and subscribe to your YouTube channel because if they do that, they'll be notified every time you post something new and you should be doing that. You know, a lot of you found me on YouTube because I, um, you're giving free stuff away. Um, get your long-term drip campaign ready, okay? Before anything else, you got to get that running because you don't want to turn this puppy on. Um, oh, wait, did I skip over the, I skipped over the Zapier or the getting the automation part. So you would have to automate, if, you, if you're using some other system, make sure that your system is gonna be able to get everything in. And then identify your target audience and make sure that you know who's, who's gonna get this in, if you're gonna run ads, right? And then create, create your uh, ad if you're gonna run an ad. Now, you don't have to run an ad. You can go in and put it in different places like the marketplace. I think I have a screen in here. I feel like I might've missed it, but um, maybe I haven't. Um, create your video add or post wherever you're going to put it and then get your retargeting ads ready because after a while you might want to go do that after you get some people signing up right and then follow up fast follow up follow up follow up i don't know what happened i lost a page here so i had a page in here that said where you can post it uh i don't know where it went so i must have lost like i was in here editing it earlier from an old old training i had but um, posting it would be like on the bottom of your youtube channel uh when you're on a video if somebody happens to see you on a video, then you want to put it down in the bottom of the link uh, in the in the communication or in the contact content uh, the text area down there. <laughs> you can also put live links um, in the about area of your video. You can go in there and put links to anything in there if you want to. So that's one place. You're going to go to the marketplace. You can put it on Craigslist. You can use Pinterest. Yeah, it bugs me because I don't know what I saw off the top of my head now. Um, you can put it on Instagram, obviously Facebook posts, uh, run your ads or not run your ads. You can boost them if you want to boost them. If you really want to do it right, though, I would be doing lead gen ads if, over there if you could. But there's a zillion ways to do this stuff. But get up in front of people. Just create one and throw it out there and see what happens. You'll be surprised. People will sign up. All right, so insanity. Before we go there, let me see if we have any questions really quick. Uh, if you have them, let's let's do it. Love Canva. I don't use it enough to be proficient. Um, yeah, Canva can be a little tough if you don't know. But I, if you get in there and start using it a lot, um, Facebook, schools, Facebook, and YouTube will slap your hand for using photos of kids. Oh, yeah, yeah I wouldn't do that. Um, YouTube is free, yep. Um, 10 questions to ask your agent how all of these would make awesome videos and add the video on the drip and give them a guide list of home or whatever and a button and make a bitly. Gosh, you got it all over it. <laughs> yeah, you could go on and on. Um, Facebook marketplace posts. Yep. That, that works really well. YouTube and volunteering at my local track. Yep. That's what Scott's doing. Um, YouTube videos. Uh, okay. So I think I've gotten back to these. So, there's all kinds of ways and places you can do this. So are you hitting your goals? If you're not hitting your goals, we need to help you hit your goals. And how we do that in my system, so I'm gonna just give a little plug here for my new um, CRM we rolled out in early January, actually mid-January, and um, it is going like gangbusters. What my goal is for you is to help you with better content. And better content and long-term content will help you. So that's the difference. We're going to be different here in our CRM because not only are you going to get better content to convert and landing pages to lead gen, but you're also going to get the training that you wish you had in these other systems out there. Because these other systems are not so great about training you. What you're getting is me doing this. You're not going to see my face every day, though. <laughs> But I basically am going in and saying, all right, here's a piece of software inside the system, and I'm gonna show you how to use it and how to best use it for your real estate business or whatever it is. Um, I just created some new stuff. We are in the process of updating our website, so I just got these new things. Guess what? This thing on the left and this thing on the right, right here, were both created in Canva last night. <laughs> so, um, these things are awesome, but these are like, you know, things you can do. But um, so we've got all your drip campaigns covered. Uh, over here is in the center, just shows you an example of our email that we have. Inside of our emails is an example of what my writing is like, um, but also we also have these clickable links. And inside of these links is where the um, action happens basically, because when someone clicks on them, 
it will automatically drive them back over to your website. You don't even really have to think about it because they're already built in the system to do it. It's pulling in from your profile. You don't even have to go in and change it unless you are offering something that's specific to them and then you might want to create an email that has the link that goes directly to the page that you built for them, which is what I'd recommend you do. Uh, this bottom one is uh, just a sample of what the video email looks like because we do have video emailing and we send them over to YouTube, just so you know. And then over here, uh, talks about the flows themselves um, on top of the fact that we've got all the campaigns. This is exactly what's all included in the actual drip campaign. And we call them flows because I don't know if you noticed, but we also add tags. We provide ourselves notes. We add sources. We give ourselves reminders. This thing can do so many things. So it's not just about emailing and texting. It's also helping to track your business inside of the, inside of the account better. So we've got all of that stuff built in already. So why are you reinventing a wheel? If you're gonna go out and start spending money and time advertising, um, you wanna make sure that you've got something in place to follow up because you're only hurting yourself. <laughs> it's a big fat waste of time um, to do it without having something in place. Uh, so here's an example of one of our landing pages which you saw earlier. Um, we have them already pre-built for home buyer lists buyer and seller guys, what's my home worth, open house sign-ins, marketing my listings, and then holiday video pages I showed you earlier. And then the awesome part is, is we got the campaigns that are actually built to attach to these as well if you want, so you don't have to reinvent a wheel. You'll just go in and fine tune the first two things that come out of the system. You'll clone the campaign and add it to each one of your landing pages and you're boom, you're done and you're not having to reinvent the wheel. Okay. So that's really is the point is that we don't know what to say, right? We don't know what to say. Now I'm giving you a special deal today. If you want to sign in, um, you can go over to engagemorecrm.com and I'm going to warn you right now that we are in the process of updating our site. You're going to get over there and it's probably going to redirect you somewhere else. Uh, I've tried to put I put in the redirect, but it ha uh, to redirect it while we're in the process of the upgrade, and so it may not be up running yet, but it will tell you where to go. So you're going to click on that and go over to the new site. Um, and when you get over to the new site, when you sign up, I'm giving you 10% off coupon deal for um, if you pay for the whole year, you get two months off plus 10%. If you pay monthly, you're going to get 10% off your first um, your first uh, payment. So it's, it's, it's basically off your first payment, you get the 10% off. Just so you can try it out, which is really, if you're not sure and you're on the not really sure, go try it out. Um, we don't give a free uh, uh, trial, as you saw, because we have all of these awesome content that's built in here and we can't give it away. Um, but we want you to try it and make sure that it's going to work. And most people that have come in, almost all the people that have come in since we rolled out are still here and um, they're getting results. And I know this because we have some testimonials that have already come in. And <laughs> some of you are on this call, so you're going to go, wow, Patty, I didn't know you were going to use that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the goal is to get you to close more deals. And this literally is over the last few weeks that we've been open um, and stuff has been going nuts in here. Just nutty, nut, nut, nuts. And it's a different life in here. It's, it's a different home. Um, I would, if I had some of these people on live, they would tell you that it's, it's not, it's, I wanted you to come, I wanted this to be a house when you came in and you felt warm and fuzzy. And I wanted you to come in and feel like, I'm not going to be left out in the cold and I'm going to get the help that I need because I'm really lost. Uh, most of us are really lost in our CRMs and we don't want that for you. We want you to stick around and stay. And we can only do that if, if we teach you how to use it, but also if we give you the right campaigns and the stuff to do the things with, because we know you don't want to do it. I know you don't because this is what I've been doing for years is training agents on this stuff. Um, because, you know, you know, I used to sit here for three hours. I actually ended up injured over this, but I was building my house out here in Scottsdale, for those of you who don't know, and I was living in a 40-foot um, fifth wheel for two and a half years while we were waiting because I was a realtor trying to get a loan, okay? So <laughs> um, while we were having for a construction loan on top of it. But I built my entire business out of that thing. And um, what I know is that, you know, I sat there for three hours, three, four hours and train agents just like this on a screen back and forth and realize it wasn't the most productive because um, I was shoving a lot of info 
down your down your face, right? And then I'd give you a recording back, and it was a lot. So we just put all of this into our monthly payment. Our monthly fee is included. All everything. This training is going in there. This is the kind of stuff that I do. What other CRM is providing you this kind of stuff, right? And more amazing testimonials. So it really is an amazing thing. This one down here is actually a text that Troy got back of, and I just took a screenshot of it because he was happy that he got a response. So when you're getting those kind of quick responses by literally bringing your database in and getting started uh, fast, uh, and then once it's in, the worst part's the cleanup. And by the way, I help you get that cleaned up. I show you the best practices for exporting cleaning up and bringing it in so you're not bringing it in and, and this messy old database. We're going to clean this puppy up before it comes in, show you how to do that. And you can integrate everything. So my goal, and this was my camper, by the way, I don't know if this is my little slide out. I had to take a picture so I could keep it here. This was when I was creating this <laughs> courses I was doing. Um, but this is my goal. If I could get one extra deal out of your database a month, uh, what would that do without you having to go out and spend more money? That's the goal. We don't want you spending more money if we can help it and um, or more time. What if we could just get some, squeeze some more juice out of that washcloth, right? Um, and see what we could get out of it, you know? Uh, what would that do for your income every year? If we could get just one, you know, our goal is to get more than that and that will happen, you know, as long as you keep up, keep doing your thing. Um, all right, cool. So I promised you I was going to give you something free. So here it is. This is it. I'm going to give it to you. And everybody who's in here is already in my system is I'm going to go give it to you inside of Engage More. So you're going to get it in there. But if you're not, you're still going to get it. I'm going to email it out. This is a Word document that is the 10 important questions to ask your real estate agent. It's about, I'm going to say it's about five or six pages long, but this is just the cover. And you can brand it to yourself. Um, so I'm going to give you instructions here on the side, and you'll be able to remove these notes. And then I'll tell you exactly how to put in your links and how to use it and then how to take it. And, and you can take it and do whatever it is you want with it. Um, this is my gift to you Whoops, for signing up today. Uh, my stand-up desk just hit me. <laughs> um, so this is free and I'll give it to you, but you know, here's the thing, take it, make sure that you've got a good landing page to get it out there. Don't just give it away. You never just want to give things away to people. You want them, like this is a tip. If you're going to, you can put it, this is another cool thing is you can send it in an email, but you want to ask them if they want it first. This is all part of the stuff that I build already. So you never just want to give stuff to people because number one, they're just going to take it and go, Oh, isn't that nice? But also, um, they're going to basically, you know, not ever call you back. So you want to get a response from people, right? Always. So I'm going to give you this and it'll be sent in an email out here um, after we get this video um, uh, uh, rendered and I'll put it in an email to you. And I'm actually going to send it in a video email to you just like I would in my system. And then you will get this as an attachment and that attachment will be and a button at the bottom of the screen. So you're gonna see our email templates in action with this stuff. And, and honestly, um, our system is built for you. Um, I wanna help you stop the madness. It's time to work smarter. Stop, stop doing things manually. And when I hear about people saying, yeah, I've been just dealing, I talked to a guy yesterday, he said he was getting like 30, 40 leads a month through his messenger. He was ready to pull his hair out. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Um, Please, let's not do that. Let's automate this. And if we can help you automate, um, then you can go out and free up more time and, and create more leads for yourself, right? And then, but don't start doing all of that until you get the stuff set up, all right? So that's it. Go to Engage More CRM. If you get redirected, have patience. We're in construction mode over there. So it'll just forward you over to another um, page that we're excited to be able to start rolling out. and. Um, Check it out, baby. Um, we're so glad that you came today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you And let me go back so you have that coupon code again. There it is. It's Patty's deal. It's going to probably pop in all in caps if you go and sign up. All right. So um, I hope to see you in there. And I want to thank you again for spending time with me today in the lead magnet uh, training. I'm excited to do it and um, can't wait to see you inside of Engage More.